All right, I'm trying out a new system today, and um, I've actually had the program all along. I just didn't realize it could do this. So um, I'm able to adjust my mic so it sounds better and the volume so it's it's not overly overly loud, and I don't I actually don't even have to speak into it, so that's the way you can see my pretty face. <laughs> har, har. Um, anyway. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is, now I did a, my, my first video, was it yesterday, on evolution and the possibility of evolution. Um, I made the statement, it's, it cannot be tested and it cannot be observed. And that is exactly correct. So don't come in my comments saying that you can observe it. You can't. Nobody has ever observed it. It is not even a valid theory. It is a hypothesis created by, basically by people that don't want to acknowledge that there's a God. And that's what it boils down to. There is absolutely not one shred of evidence for evolution, regardless of what you guys say. Now, you guys have come up with these little straw man arguments and, <laughs> and try to make it sound like you know what you're talking about and saying, oh, we're not scientific. You don't have a clue, man. You don't have a clue. You have, you have absolutely no idea. So, basically, with this lesson... We're going to blow evolution out of the water. If you're honest about it. Now, if you've got it in your mind that there's no God and that you're going to believe in evolution no matter what, then regardless of what I say, you're going to remain ignorant. And that is ignorance. It truly is. To believe something so ridiculous that the universe and everything and all the order in the universe, the order in the human body, all of that just occurred by happenstance as a result of chaos, as a result of some explosion. And what exploded? All right, so let's get into this. Today, we're going to be looking at the laws of thermodynamics which, based on those alone, makes evolution completely impossible. Yes, completely impossible. I don't care what you have to say about, oh, they need the change in the alien chromosome and all that stupid crap. I don't want to hear that stuff. What you've got to explain to me is, how did everything start? How could there be nothing? You got nothing. Even if it's just empty space, something had to create the space. Something had to create the matter. No, the Big Bang, something exploded. What exploded? Hmm? Explain that to me. I don't want to hear about survival of the fittest. What I want to hear about is arrival of the fittest. So until you can tell me without a supernatural cause how things came into being, don't even talk to me. Until you can explain that, your arguments, regardless of what they are, hold absolutely no weight. Now what is the first law of thermodynamics? The first law of thermodynamics says that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change form. Now, you say that evolution is observable, that it's scientific. Evolution flies in the face of every known law of science. Every law of science known to man, evolution is the complete opposite. The law of thermodynamics says that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. If it can't be created, it means it had to be created by a supernatural force. So, 
How did it start? How did it start? Seriously. Can you answer that question? How, even if there was a big bang, what, big, what banged? What exploded? Where did the matter come from that exploded? Something has to be able to explain where matter came from, where space came from. How did it all start? You can't explain that with evolution. Ain't no way. No way. You can't explain that with evolution, people. Nope, 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 nope. Can't do it. There's only one explanation for how things got started, and that is what it says in Genesis chapter 1, where it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That is the only way it could have happened. You cannot have nothingness. And then all of a sudden, boop, here comes something out of nothing. There had to be a catalyst. There had to be something that got everything started. You can't just have space and matter without a cause. Cause and effect. Simple cause and effect. For every effect, there must be an adequate, adequate cause. What's the cause? Apart from God creating things. What's the cause? You don't have an answer. At least a feasible one. Now, I know you can come up with a bunch of fancy arguments and crap like that, but you don't have an answer for it. You don't. Regardless of what you say, you don't have an answer, and you know it. And here's the thing. You people that say you don't believe in God, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Deep down, you do. Deep down, everybody has an innate knowledge of God. You have an innate knowledge of right and wrong. Do you think morality came from a rock? Do you think that an inanimate object could say, oh, this is right, this is wrong? How did, how did morality develop? Where did the idea of marriage come from? You can't explain that by evolution. You can't do it. Without the influence of God, we'd be just like the animal kingdom. There is no morality in the animal kingdom. None. Animals kill animals. There is absolutely no morality with them. First law of thermodynamics says that Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change form. That is true science. See, people say evolution is scientific. No, it's not at all. Not in the least. All it is is a bunch of hypotheses that a bunch of depraved minds come up with different scenarios trying to explain God away. That's all it is. And a lot of stuff that's taught in schools, which we'll be getting, getting into this in later lessons, there are, are a lot of things taught in schools and still put in textbooks that were disproven long ago. You ever see like in the textbooks where they got the, oh, the line from like Neanderthal man all the way to modern man and the different stages, Neanderthal man and Cro-Magnon man and Doofus man, and all, all, all those different... Every one of those has been proven to be either a fake or misjudgment. All of, them, all of them have been disproven, yet they are still in textbooks. They are still being taught as fact to your kids. And they know, they know, they know, they know that it's all Lies. People, you've been indoctrinated. Your kids have been indoctrinated. If they go to a public school, they've been indoctrinated. In fact, that's what college is all about. College, unless it's like a Bible college, college is all about developing a bunch of liberals. 
by a bunch of liberal professors and you're paying thousands of dollars to have your kids destroyed is what it amounts to. I wouldn't send a, co- a kid to college. No. There's a lot of other things you can do without going to college. And people with college degrees working in grocery stores and, and the Dollar Tree. Yeah. So anyway. So the first law of thermodynamics disproves evolution because it says scientifically that matter cannot be created. That means that it can only be created by a supernatural force. Now, the one I really have fun with is the second law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of entropy. Now, let's say you have all the materials necessary to create life. Let's say you have a a dead deer, and you grab all the organs, you grab everything, got everything there to create life. And so you go and you throw it in a pond, and you sit and wait. Hmm. What's going to happen? Is it going to... Well, put it this way, according to evolution, all of it would come together and it would start forming and it would grow back into a deer. Is that what we see? When I lived in Montana, every night when I drive home, (laughs) there's a new, at least one dead deer along the side of the highway. Because it was like right along, right along I-90, uh, I-90, I-94, heading east. And there was deer getting hit every day. Every day there was an, at least one new dead deer along the side of the road. Not one time did I ever see those particles that got splattered all over the highway Not one time did I ever see them go back together and start forming and creating a new being. Now, if evolution were true, that's what we would see. Now, I know you'll argue against that and say, no, 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 no. You only have two options. You have two options. Two options only. You either have evolution where things come together and they grow and get better over time or they decay. That's your only two options. They either grow and get better or they decay. Now what do we see? We see the law of entropy. Do we not? Things decay. People die, they decay. They turn back into dust. Animals die, they decay. They turn back into dust. You leave a building sitting by itself without proper maintenance, without taking care of it, what happens? Oh, you go to some of these old ghost towns, you know, and you look at some of these old buildings that they have there that they haven't been lived in for years and years and years and haven't been kept up. They just start falling apart. The wood starts decaying. Why? That is the law of entropy at work. And you can come up with whatever arguments that you want to espouse, but the fact is, going by what we see and what can be observed and what can be tested We see the law of entropy over and over and over and over. All right, and I don't want to hear this nonsense about, well, in a closed system, look, stop being stupid. Just open your eyes and see what we can actually observe. And what do we observe? We observe entropy. We observe the second law of thermodynamics at work. We do. There is absolutely no way that you can argue against that unless you're a complete moron. 
You can't argue against that. That's what we see. And so we can have all the little hypotheses that we want. We can come up with all these little scenarios about how, well, and, well you know, we evolved and then it just stopped and reversed. How stupid is that? Are you a complete idiot if you believe that? Yeah, you, well, actually, yeah, you are if you believe that. But how, how can you believe something so stupid? I mean, we have to go by what we see, do we not? To test anything scientifically, it has to be observable and it has to be testable. And somebody made a comment yesterday, oh, we've observed evolution. No, you have not. You have not observed evolution. And, when, and we're not, not talking about zapping, zapping fruit flies with, with you know, radiation and crap like that. that. They say, well, we did this and we got them to mutate. Yeah, yeah, they mutated not on their own. And they didn't. And the thing is, even if they mutated, they were still fruit flies. They didn't mutate into an eagle. You've never seen a, a lizard mutate into a sparrow. Okay, now you want to prove evolution, then show me an intermediate species. Show me where something is evolving into something else. Oh, they used the argument, well, it takes millions of years. No, we've only been on this planet for about 6,000 years, according to the Bible. It has not been a period of millions and millions of years. But yeah, you've got to use that as an excuse. That's where you come up with the scenario that the Earth is millions of years old. So you can explain why we're not seeing evolution right now because it goes and... No, you would still have intermediate species. Even if if things were evolving at different speeds, you would still have intermediate species. And by the way, there's never been any intermediate species found in the fossil record either. There's never been anything that was part lizard and part bird or part monkey and part lion or whatever. And we'll get into this more when we start looking at DNA. But even things as closely related as, like, say, lions and tigers, even they can't interbreed. Oh, yeah, a lion, a lion, a male lion and a female tiger could have a, a, a cub. But guess what? That cub's going to be sterile. Yeah. The DNA has limits, and we're gonna we'll get into that lesson. No, I'm not sure when, but there's just <laughs> there's absolutely no way. So, unless for today, let me just say this: unless you can give me a logical reason for the universe starting that isn't supernatural, which you can't, uh, if you can show me where. You don't observe the law of entropy, or you can't. If you can show me an intermediate species, which we're going to get into more of that when we look at, start looking at the fossil record later on. So, basically, if you cannot give me an explanation for how the universe started without supernatural means... then go away. Don't even talk to me until you can come up with the origin. Until you can come up with the feasible how everything started without supernatural means. And here's the thing. You can't. You can't. Because it is impossible. And if we go by the true laws of science, both the first and second laws of thermodynamics are the direct opposite of evolution. They're the direct opposite of what we would need for evolution to take place. And look around us. Do you see anything changing from one species into another? No. Here's the thing. You don't want to acknowledge that there's a God. Oh, by the way, you're going to stand before him whether you think believe in it or not. You'll believe in it when you die. Oh, yes, you will. 
Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whatever decision you make before you leave this earth, that's going to be for all eternity. So, I believe there's a God. I believe that Christ died for us. And guess what? If I were to die and it turns out not to be true, I haven't lost anything. I mean, I know it's true. But let's just say for argument's sake that it isn't true. What have I lost? Nothing. I haven't lost a thing. I enjoy my relationship with God. Now, you, on the other hand, you say there's no God, you don't believe that God created the heavens and the earth, and you're just going to go your own way, do your own thing, and you don't want to be accountable to anybody. When you die, what if you're wrong? What if you die and you wake up in hell knowing that you're going to be there for all eternity? Something to think about. It really is. You better think long and hard about it. You know what sends most people to hell? Stubbornness. Pride. A willingness to sub- unwillingness to submit. I'm just not going to believe in it. Okay, cool. But... I don't, would not want to be you when you die. Something to think about. All right, we're going to get into, um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to go into in the next lesson, but I did want to just cover this briefly today. And of course, this is not all that in depth because you really don't have to. I mean, to me, it's common sense. We see the law of entropy at work. That is observable. We see it at work. All right. Talk to you later.